Oh my, some nice jewelry. And welcome to another tour by Hawaiian Shirt Papa. This time it's the Encore Thrift Store in Brampton. It's a very nice location. The entrance is not on the street facing side, uh, but they did have a Hawaiian shirt on the street facing side. I had to grab a, an image of that. There's the door. It's kind of around the corner. It's facing the railway tracks. We had just gone under railway tracks to get to here. And they do have a bunch of clothing. It's not a, a massive selection of clothing, but a good selection of clothing. Then they had uh, all these other items. Um, the tour may be a little disjointed in that the store was very busy when I was there and um, it's short distances from one kind of uh, item being sold to another one. Come vicariously tour thrift stores and antique shops with Hawaiian shirt Papa. So we've jumped from clothing to toys to sporting goods and games. Um, it's, it doesn't feel like it's that mixed up, but it comes out feeling that mixed up in the, in this video. The right at the front cache, there's, uh, their jewelry selection, costume, and what appears to be some nicer stuff as well. And, uh, between the cache and the front windows, there are, uh, some bicycles. I guess they want to keep a better eye on them or that they're easier to sell off. It was in the warmer weather when I was here, so that may vary with time and time of year as well. These um, nice pieces, some of them are most likely costume jewelry, but they're very nice looking ones. Here's the same one I used as a splash image. The prices were okay for what they are. I mean, if they were like at least sterling, they were really nice prices. I'm not sure if these were uh, sterling or not. I wasn't looking for those this on this visit. But there was uh, quite a selection. These are some photographs that were just panning down from top to bottom on. Didn't want to choose a particular section because there was more to be seen. And we're back to the clothing. Oh, that's the front window there. And they, they use the space between the clothing racks in the front window, plus uh, window displays. A vintage mixer, stand mixer. And they had sets of cutlery in a box. As I said, there's a nice selection of stuff. Uh, some some furniture, it's closer to the back of the store. The store isn't massive. But there's a bit of an island in the middle, which uh, forces you go around kind of like a donut. It doesn't take away from your experience in any way. And as you can see, it's not crowded with materials on the shelves. Some shelves are actually cleared out. So there's, you're not knocking around and to get to something that you might see on some of the shelves. Other shelves, well, they're, they're quite filled up. Those are the electronics section. Some small appliances. Lamps, shades, 
And we are into the books all of a sudden and artwork. But we got the furniture right across from the aisle from it, including one of these uh, Black & Decker work benches that clamp your stuff. This is an interesting f round table. There are actually more than one here because, as you'll see in a moment, they're almost like a um, TV tray table, almost. They're a bit bigger, so they fold up. Could be useful for uh, some, some folks. Back to some clothing, and across from the across the aisle is the books. Pretty good selection. And they've got some sort of deal every on Wednesdays for the books. As you can see, we switched from one kind of item to a completely different kind of item without even turning. We're still in the same area as the books. These are LPs. Magazines, soft covers, hard covers. But it, the flow works when you're in the store. It's, it, on the video it doesn't seem to make any sense and to chop it up I it, it wasn't going to work you've got bins of soft materials and all of a sudden you're into into plates and cups and saucers and I relate it so they have a few of these freestanding smaller um, displays that they seem to have some nicer stuff on them and then you've got the average the usual expected materials of mugs and so on this looked interesting it's not particularly old but it does have a nice design aesthetic to it Some cookware as well, and back to some some clothing. These are more of the men's. I thought not entirely sure. Then to uh, some of the things may be mixed up. I find that sometimes the uh, Hawaiian shirt kind of materials get mixed in to the wrong gendered. Although both can wear some things. They had some safety vests there, and sweaters, and sweat tops, and jackets, suit jackets. As a like I said, there's a selection of all kinds of things here. I would certainly suggest if you're in that area to uh, pop in, have a look. It's not far from some of the others that are in the same area. I reviewed one just in previously to this one that, that uh, is only a few blocks away. Here's a something that fits in with the Hawaiian shirt theme. It's more of a business casual than it is a bold statement. Here's another one of that nature. Prices were okay. 
not necessarily don't necessarily look at the the um, label. They all, I think they do, but they don't go crazy on marking it up for with the label. So you have a chance of getting some nice things. Even the plates, they've uh, actually put separators in so they don't rattle around. Makes for a quieter store, I'd, I'd suspect, as well. And it won't cause scratching while it's waiting to be sold. Up front, they had uh, some in the showcase windows, front front windows, some vintage, some old, some antique. We'll get to back to some of those. So some of the furniture, some of the artwork and frames. Some nice pieces there. Primarily you'll find our um, prints. Sometimes you do luck out and get a, an original. Not necessarily an artist that's well known, so you have to love art no matter which kind it is. Because if you don't love it, it's not worth buying. I'm sorry. It's a nice stool for um, some, some folks. Some of the furniture you see is pretty large, overstuffed stuff. They fit into a certain era of like the 70s type homes where there was a bit more space to put in that kind of furniture. As you can see, it's a bit of an overview here. This is the area of the clothing. It's not that small, but compared to some of the competition, it's not enormous, but it's as good selection. And the furniture, they've got some large pieces. So the downsizing that are too big, they end up here. It's not unusual. There's a number of places that we've been in to see in these thrift stores and antique shops. Items will hang around for quite a while and mainly because the scale of homes is becoming smaller. They, like I said, if you have something from the 70s, 60s, 70s size homes, they had some larger spaces. You can fit those kind of things, but not everybody wants to have that size of furniture, even if they have the larger space. As you can see, there's some other household goods here. Here's some uh, interesting items. MCM there. I'd say that was probably related to Depression glass, it isn't, but it looks like it is. They have some nice little display areas up at the front as well. And we go back to some of the clothing. Like I said, it was busy, so I had to come and go, uh, picking times and sections that. I didn't run into people in my videos. Made for a lot harder to edit though, but I'm able to capture more of the store this way. Trying to give you a pretty good overview of what they actually have. with a bit of a deeper dive to see more of the individual items. I don't spend the time to actually show you all the individual pieces. Here's one. 
blue glass with uh, a clear base. It was an okay price, but it only being one, it may not work for everybody. There's some cushions and that was a bit of gardening material there. Sporting goods. We may have seen it from the other angle previously. And we're back to some books. Oh yes, the shoes. They were actually somewhat busy in that area, so it took a while before I got to them. As usual, it's mostly women's, some children's, and not very many men's, generally. Guys tend to hold on to them, wear them out, and not obtain so many of them to start with. Some of the artwork was uh, in, spread into an island as well as the, uh, the wall. A bit more of the furniture to see here. And we're back to some of the clothing. As I said earlier, I'd probably suggest giving this place a visit if you're in the Brampton area. It's in the older downtown portion, not right there, but nearby. The Brampton GO station is like across the, across the parking lot. I can't see the entrance or exits are right there, but it's pretty close. So yeah, there's, there's quite a bit of books. Oh yes, the recorded media, the, the DVDs, CDs, so on. And a bit of a photo gallery of some of the items that I came across there. Westwood Avenue is into uh, glassware, so I usually get some images of that stuff. There's a tiddlywinks that's one of the vintage boxes of them. They had a few um, glass insulators from telephone, telegraph, tele uh, power lines. Those of you who are aficionados of these things will know whether or not these were good prices. And then they had some oil lamps. Oh, this is a bit of Pyrex as well as these gold, gold uh, enameled pieces. I remember my mom having one of those and a, a related model which had an electric heater inside it got recalled and they never did release it again. These are uh, some Bakelite handled cutlery and some MCM glass candlesticks 
and some amber MCM pl plates and some interesting other glass. Plus they have the, some newer items like this uh, mix, stand mixer. Uh, we saw a vintage one earlier and a very vintage bread box, uh, 60s, uh, 50s, 60s, and a sock dryer or stretcher. Well, the price wasn't particularly bad if you if you're into the antique sock structures thanks a lot for watching hope you enjoyed this we'd appreciate if you give us a thumbs up uh, maybe a dingle on the bell so you know when the next one shows up and i'd appreciate if you subscribed thanks a lot folks bye bye